This is Democracy Now!, The Quarantine Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Under a shocking new Trump administration policy, hundreds of people came to the United States seeking asylum, were secretly held in hotels for days on end before being expelled from the country, often with little or no paper trail. Between April and the end of June, more than 200 unaccompanied immigrant children, including babies and toddlers, were held in hotels then removed. A private contractor for ICE, that's Immigration and Customs Enforcement, took the children to three Hampton Inn hotels in Arizona and near the Texas-Mexico border. ICE paid MVM Incorporated to transport and monitor the children. The same company previously held separated immigrant children in squalid conditions in empty office buildings. As Hurricane Hannah threatened South Texas this weekend, many children held at the hotel were moved to different locations, though it's not clear where. And then, Last night, on Monday night, the ACLU and the Texas Civil Rights Project and their co-counsel successfully sued to stop the expulsion of 17 people detained in the Hampton Inn Hotel. Officials agreed instead to transfer them to the custody of ORR, that's the Office of Refugee Resettlement, where they were supposed to be held. All of this comes after members of the Texas Civil Rights Project went to the Hampton Inn Hotel on McAllen last week and attempted to offer legal help to people detained there. In in this video, you can see and hear attorney Andrew Udelsman as he is getting off an elevator on the fourth floor, confronted by men who refuse to identify themselves. Can we see your badge, sir? Sir, you can come here. You can be here. Can I ask who you are? Can, can I ask who you are, sir? Soy abogado, aquí para ayudar. Si necesitas ayuda, dígame tu nombre. Dígame tu nombre. If you're detained, give me your name. Get out if you're smart. Get out. Who are you? Who are you? Don't worry about who, who you are. Are you police? Don't worry about who we are. You need to get out. Get out. Get out. Get out now. Are you police? Don't worry about who we are. Are you police? Get out. Get out. An attorney with the Texas Civil Rights Project yelling to people and to children, are you being detained? Do you want to yell to me your name as he's being thrown out by security? For more, we go to McAllen, where we're joined by Zanen Jimenez Perez, advocacy director for the Texas Civil Rights Project, part of the team that uncovered this new Trump administration policy. Zanen, it's great to have you back with us. You were right there in the hotel on the fourth floor. Can you explain uh, how you came to learn ICE was secretly holding children in hotels like these. Hi, yes, good morning. Glad to be here. So part part of what we're seeing here with the video, right, with Andy bravely stepping forward and, and be basically taking abuse by these unnamed guards when we were there, is that uh, for many months, weeks now, especially since the CDC order that effectively um, the Trump administration used to end asylum, we, we've known that uh, folks who have been coming into the border to legally seek asylum, including unaccompanied children, that instead of going through the process that is spelled out by law, um, the Trump administration has been just basically expelling them, right, without due process and without any paper trail, in effect, basically violating their due process. So for the last couple of weeks, we've known that the number of children who have been under the custody of the federal government and the Office of Refugee Resettlement has decreased um, over the course of the pandemic. And so over in that time, in June, we filed the lawsuit um, on behalf of one of the children that was expelled. And through her um, experience and working with her, we came to find out that, there, that she was held in a hotel. And that sort of set up for us a period of investigation to try to find, well, what did she mean, right? What do you mean that you're in a hotel if you're an unaccompanied child that was never supposed to have happened to you in the first place? And so after a couple of weeks of investigation and working with the Associated Press, which broke the story, Last Tuesday, we were actually able to uncover that the Hampton Inn Hotel in McAllen, Texas, was being used to house and detain individuals, including unaccompanied children, but also other asylum seekers, including other family units, before they were expelled from the country. And it's important to sort of note the distinction between expulsion versus deportation, because under deportation, which is a legal process, there is a paper trail, right? There's a way for us to be able to track what is going on and try to do some legal intervention. But under expulsion, under Title 42 of the CDC order, what's happening is that the administration is basically just apprehending people, holding them at black sites, either like this Hampton Inn Hotel or other hotels across the country, or quite frankly, maybe moving now to um, other government prisons before they're just 
summarily expelled, disappeared basically from the country, and it becomes almost impossible for groups like us, other immigration attorneys or other human rights advocates, to try to even find individuals to try to start some type of legal process on their behalf. Well, so then, uh, Jaime Perez, I wanted to ask you, uh, this, we often hear in the United States talk of the Black Belt South, uh, those portions of the United States that were over, over, still overwhelmingly African-American. Really, the area of McAllen, South Texas, the Rio Grande Valley is the brown belt <laughs> of the United States, where the counties and cities are 80, 90 percent uh, Latino. What, with Latino elected officials, what is your understanding of what the local officials know, if anything, about what's going on here with the federal uh, agencies? Yeah, so once sort of everything became viral on Thursday, we quickly came to find out, find out that the city of McAllen, to, uh, from what they told us, that they really didn't have any knowledge of what was going on at the Hampton Inn Hotel. But this is part of the wider picture, right? The things that we're seeing in Portland, which um, DHS agents, including Border Patrol agents, where, you know, Portland is not on the border, um, they are disappearing folks, protesters, right? The thing that's happening, though, at the border in the Rio Grande Valley, in El Paso, in, in Arizona, is that the heavy militarization because of DHS over the 20, last 20 years have already have been experienced by the community here for decades, right? Hypermilitarization, unaccountable to federal agents that are basically shooting individuals with impunity. There's been numerous deaths of children and other individuals in, in ICE and also Border Patrol detention facilities here. Border wall construction is ongoing and even ramping up in the middle of the pandemic. And there have been this type of hypermilitarization on brown communities here at the border for decades and decades and decades. And so what we saw on Thursday was also an outcrop of that. And unfortunately, this is definitely something that is being imposed under the national security apparatus coming to Washington, D.C., with no regard to the communities that have actually been here and live here and have been undergoing this militarization for decades. And then I wanted to get your response to the Hilton Company, which owns Hampton Inn brand. They said, our policy has always been that hotels should not be used as detention centers or for detaining individuals. We expect all Hilton properties to reject business that would use a hotel in this way. Your response and what are you demanding of them? Yeah, you know, definitely on Friday we had that um, statement from the Hilton Company, but we also saw that in the statement they said that they were no longer detaining individuals at that Hampton Inn Hotel. But when we went on Saturday, we definitely found still families there that were waving at us from the, the window, right? And so we definitely knew that they had to, and, and on Monday we saw the Hilton Company actually update their statement to clarify what was actually going on. And so we know that this sort of uh, back and forth is happening and that there is definitely Definitely accountability that the Hilton Company needs to have because um, it definitely happened under their noses, right? It happened not just in the, in, in the Valley, but also in, as you mentioned, in Arizona and in other locations. So definitely there's some more oversight and accountability that needs to happen there. But the wider point I think here is that these black sites that are being operated by the DHS, whether they're at a Hilton uh, Ritz Carlton, or even one of the government prisons that we already already have a network of along the border. The the wider picture here is that there is no oversight, no accountability to what's going on. So we could have families and other detained folks in here in our community still, and there would always, almost be no way for us to find out until, unless we do a big investigation like we just did to uncover one site. So if this is what it takes to uncover one location and try to stop the illegal expulsion of just 17 individuals, which, you know, we're, we know that there were more than 17 in there, so we're still actively looking for those under indivi other individuals who were moved this weekend under the cover or a hurricane. So if this is all happening with no oversight, we, we can only just kind of imagine what other black sites and what other secrecy is being operated by DHS along the border. You're calling for a congressional investigation so you don't have to imagine? Exactly, yes. So this is the type of oversight that we need, right? We need people to start asking questions like, how many people have been expelled? How many unaccompanied minors? Where are these locations? And why aren't why isn't there access to legal counsel at these at these areas? And so before we start, uh, we, we can't um, intervene on behalf of individuals unless we know the full picture. And unfortunately, right now, the administration has been using the COVID pandemic to basically create a, a cloud of secrecy 
over their asylum process and the asylum, illegal asylum policies here at the border. And we really need to shine a light on that. Well, you mentioned the hurricane, and we want to stay at the Texas-Mexico border to look at what's happened to asylum seekers in the Mexican city of Matamoros, uh, just across from Brownsville, Texas, one of the largest refugee camps that houses more than a thousand asylum seekers, including newborns and elderly people, told to evacuate overnight when the river next to it, the Rio Grande, started to rise and flood their tents. Rain from Hurricane Hannah has continued to devastate the area. These are people who have been waiting for months for court dates under a U.S. immigration policy, informally known as Remain in Mexico. For more, we're joined by Sister Norma Pimental. She is executive director of Catholic Charities of the Rio Grande Valley. Welcome to Democracy Now! Can you describe what happened last night and what people need to know? Thank you. Uh, yes, the, we have been very concerned for the, the thousand, almost 2,000 individual refugees that are waiting there in Matamoros and the seeing that the river is cross, growing. Yes? Keep going. Yes, sister. We, want, we just want to make sure that they're safe. And we, together with the authorities of Matamoros, the, the immigration uh, in Mexico, we are we're trying to work with the families to move them to a safer space. Uh, and because they're afraid, they're afraid that what is happening to them and not wanting to leave the area, they, we continue to just monitor the river and we're prepared to move them to a safer space to this morning or throughout this day. And, and uh, Sister Norma, in terms of how the uh, how uh, the United States, uh, we're hearing all the attention placed on the storm in the U.S., very little on the impact on Mexico right across the border. Well, we we see the the families in Mexico. I mean, all the all the border is being affected on both sides of the U.S. and the Mexican border, and and there's a lot of extensive flooding in both sides. And so uh, we already seen how the river they're letting go water is being released from by by along the rivers areas to release all the flooding that is happening in Reynosa and other other cities already the the, the river has gone over and covered uh, a lot of areas and so we were afraid that this is happening also in Matamoros and so. Um, we're trying to do our best to assist the families and help the Mexican authorities to, that are concerned for the safety of the families. I want to turn to Josue Cornejo, a um, Honduran asylum seeker who's been forcibly living at the Matamoros encampment with his family for a year due to Trump's Remain in Mexico policy. Ya que fueron dos noches y dos días de desvelo, porque ya para, para que... There were some very difficult days and nights, two long sleepless nights. The rain has passed, but it's now headed to the mountains. What are the consequences of that? The Rio Grande flows from up there. The most dangerous part could come if the river floods. The camp is right next to the river. There is no protection for us if the river overflows. So that's Josue describing what's happening there. Can you compare the U.S. response to Mexico, Sister Norma? Well, uh, I wish that the U.S. can see the danger that these families are, are exposed to and that they are allowed to enter the United States and be safe in an area here in the U.S. so we can take care of them as they go through their, their, their asylum process, because it's not safe for them to be there in that area. And finally, you wrote a piece in The Washington Post, uh, Sister Norma, um, that COVID-19 has come to our migrant camp. It makes ending the MPP policy even more urgent. In these last 30 seconds, explain how hard COVID has hit there. Well, we are doing our best to control the spread of COVID, and measures are being taken to make sure it doesn't. We're thankful that, that we can do that, but they are truly at the need to move them out of there and allow them to enter the country of the United States is the right way to do it. And I wish that that happened.
And we'll link to your piece, MPP is that Remain in Mexico program. Sister Norma Pimentalo, I want to thank you for being with us, Executive Director of Catholic Charities of the Rio Grande Valley. And thank you to Zanen Jaimez Perez, the Advocacy Director for the Texas Civil Rights Project. We will continue to follow what's happened to these disappeared children and adults. That does it for our broadcast. Uh, if you want to sign up for our Democracy Now! daily newsletter, you can go to Democracy Now! Org, or text the word democracy now uh, to the number 66866. That's democracy now, one word. Democracy now produced with Renee Feltz, Mike Burke, Dean Augusta, Libby Rainey, Nermeen Sheikh, Harla Wills, Tammy Warrenoff, Tarina Nadura, Sam Alkoff, Tay Maria Studio, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Honey Massoud. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Stay safe, save lives, wear a mask. <laughs>